Now, Jamie Isset was at a friend's house on New Year's Day when he collapsed. The ambulance took seven, 17 minutes to arrive and his friends had no access to a defibrillator. He later died in hospital, aged just 18. Now, his mother, Naomi Isset, and the Conservative MP for rugby, Mark Pawsey, are campaigning for more defibrillators and for A&E services in rugby. Gloria De Piero talked with Naomi last week. Jamie was out with his friends um, at his best friend's parents' house in rugby on New Year's Eve. Um, they watched some fireworks. They were having a dance in the garage and just having fun, really, New Year's Eve, him and four of his friends. And um, about 2.20 a.m. on New Year's Day, Jamie um, sat down on the floor and collapsed. Uh, he told his friend he just felt funny wasn't sure why um, and the next thing they realised that Jamie wasn't breathing and he'd gone into cardiac arrest. Um, Jamie's best friend's mum called 999 and his his other best friend Josh also called 999 um, and they started doing CPR on Jamie straight away. Um, Josh mainly, his, his best friend was doing the CPR um, but the ambulance just took such a long time to get there. Um, the police turned up in the meantime, um, but sadly uh, they didn't have a defibrillator in the police car, so they had to wait then for another police officer to go and get the defibrillator from the local police station. And the ambulance unfortunately took over 17 and a half minutes to reach Jamie, um, which you know we, we've now been told was just too long. Jamie just went too long with no oxygen. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to hear that. You've reached out to your MP, haven't you? You Tell me when and, and why. Well, it was within a few weeks, really. I mean, like every parent, we, we just wanted reasons. We wanted to understand. Um, we know now that Jamie... Um, passed away following the lack of oxygen and his cardiac arrest was due to sudden arrhythmic death syndrome. So it didn't really give us any reasons and we wanted to understand why everything took so long and we decided to speak to our MP, Mark Pawsey. Um, there was a number of different things we wanted to talk to him about. Um, the delay with the ambulance obviously was the main one. We were told by the people on the scene that you know, they were literally screaming down the phone, where's the ambulance? Why is it taking so long? And we wanted an understanding of, of why the nearest ambulance was 15 miles away. But we were also sort of asking Mr. Pawsey about accessible defibrillators in our area. We started a campaign really soon after we lost Jamie, really something as a family for us to focus on, to try and install defibrillators across our town. Because um, obviously our nearest hospital is... 15 miles away in Coventry. In rugby, we have no accident and emergency, no main hospital, no trauma centre, no standby ambulance. The last one of those got re removed in September of last year. Um, so, you know, not that we should have to look for another option, but we were looking as a family to get these accessible defibrillators installed across rugby. Um, the nearest defibrillator to Jamie on the night he collapsed was actually three minutes away, but sadly locked inside a school. Um, so the chances of his friends being able to get to that, especially on New Year's Eve or in a school holiday, was zero. Um, so we decided as a family that we were going to get these accessible 24-7 uh, defibrillators, put as many places as we possibly can. We fight because we have to do for Jamie. It's the only way we've got left to care about him and get an understanding. And we've never, ever blamed an ambulance crew or a paramedic and we know that everything the police and the paramedics did when they reached Jamie it was all they could do but like I've said so many times it must be soul destroying for those ambulance crews to know that they are 17 minutes away from somebody who isn't breathing and has no heartbeat. Absolutely. So you've got your campaign, you're, you're, you're doing amazingly on your campaign. The campaign is called Our Jeer. Um You've put very clearly what the demands are and you've got a walk coming up too. Tell us about that, finally. Yeah, so obviously we're doing the fundraising for Jamie um, for the defibrillators, but kind of a bit separate to that, we started the Our J um, Foundation 
And part of that is that we will be walking 17.3 kilometres for Jamie on the 17th of July. So our walk really is to signify the 17.33 minutes that Jamie waited for help. Um, so myself and 17 other ladies are walking that. Um, again, we've been backed by the businesses of rugby um, and we will be meeting at Jamie's College, which is the first place we had one of his defibrillators installed in March. Um, and we just hope that we, a lot of people are going to be there to support us and show our MP and the ambulance service and Sajid Javed how passionately we feel about getting this change for Jamie. I hope it goes well. I, I, it's um, been such a... I wish we hadn't had to speak because, I, of course, we wish that Jamie was, was here. But, my goodness... Well, what about we've said all along, 17.33 minutes is just too long. It's... You know, yes. when you're in cardiac arrest, your chances of survival decrease by 10% per minute. Um, and Jamie was just left with no chance of survival. Um, and, you know, he deserves to still be here. He was he was the most amazing boy. He still is the most amazing boy. Um, and he's just missed. This is this is just our only way to carry on looking after him. Well, that was Jamie's mother, Naomi, speaking with Gloria last week. Well, let's bring in Mark Pawsey now, the Conservative MP for rugby, who's been working closely with Naomi, Jamie's mother, of course, to bring about change. Uh, it's, it's, the most, it's, it's the most heartbreaking story that you could possibly imagine. Uh, how, how soon did Naomi come to you after this tragedy? Naomi came to my office um, in around early February and gave me exactly the account she's just given to your viewers, and it was incredibly moving, and it's... Um, you know, testament to her that she's got this uh, campaign together really on, on two points, really. One is about the accessibility of ambulances in rugby, which has been an issue for many of my constituents, and uh, she set out exactly why uh, that's an issue. And, and secondly, the bit about access to defibrillators. I mean, how frustrating for Jamie's friends to know that there was a defibrillator in the school very nearby but it was locked up inside the school building and so a big part of the uh, campaign is to get these defibrillators externally mounted but uh, Tom one of the reasons why people don't want to mount them externally is that they're subject to vandalism and people steal the components and there are uh, other instances where um, a supermarket chain puts them on the outside of their buildings and then puts them in the building at the end of the day. Um, We've taken that up with the issue of, um, uh, you know, the, the, the sentences for people who uh, steal or damage them uh, with the Justice uh, Secretary um, had to reply there that the, the measures are there, but it's a matter of getting the evidence when those things happen. Mm. So uh, an, an externally mounted defibrillator, I think, costs three times the price of an internally mounted mm. one. So for every um, three that are indoors and locked away, you can only get one outdoors. And the other problem is who's responsible for them? There doesn't yeah. seem to be... That there are... But plenty of uh, organisations, people like Naomi, who are working really hard to raise money through charity, but nobody seems to take responsibility for them. My own view, and I express this uh, to ministers, is that the ambulance service should have a responsibility for them. Um, it assists the ambulance service in, in, in providing their service. We know there's an issue about the time it took to get to Jamie, but if the ambulance service uh, w looked after them, there might be a better chance of them being kept in good condition. Yes. And I've got an analogy there, and that's that in the old days of pay phones, uh, a member of each BT staff would be responsible for a payphone and look at it daily mm. and just check it's OK, and that way uh, any, any faults with it could be reported. I'm sure there's an army of volunteers out there who would be willing to adopt an external defibrillator, check on it daily, and then we can make sure they're in good condition. That's a really interesting point there, an almost big society solution to this problem, because it's so interesting. We talk so often, or, or we hear in the news so often, about there being X number of defibrillators in an area, but that, that almost doesn't matter unless they're not unless they're accessible. That, that's, the, that's the key distinction. Uh, absolutely, and, and we've got a, re a register of defibrillators. I'm not sure that it, it identifies whether they're internal or external. So, mm. uh, and if people dial 999, uh, the response service can tell people where the nearest defibrillator is. But I think there's something like two-thirds of the defibrillators that have been installed that aren't on that register. So the first mm. thing is to get that register completely up to date. But then let's do some work on having somebody taking charge and not leaving it to community organisations. I mean, Naomi says, you know, why should it be for us to, you know... To, 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 to raise money through a charitable cause to provide these things. They should be, mm. they should be provided by, uh, by, the, by the health service and they should be maintained by the health service. Well, talking about that first point now, yeah. the ambulance waiting time, yeah. what's the practical 
solution to this? Because we know that the NHS has had tens of billions more funding pumped into it. We know all of our taxes have gone up in order to pay for more services on the NHS, catching up with the backlog, all of that sort of stuff. It's, it's not really about money necessarily here. No, it's about efficiency of the service. And one of the challenges is the very great demand of accidents and emergency. In some cases, people who really should be uh, being seen by primary care, leading to congestion at, uh, at the hospitals. We know in Jamie's case that the ambulance came from Coventry and it was there discharging a patient. They weren't able to discharge the patient because uh, on New Year's Eve, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, a and a pretty busy place. So the ambulance was waiting there and that's why it took that critical 17 minutes to get from Coventry to Rugby to attend to attend to Jamie. So we need to improve discharge. We've raised it with uh, the West Midland Ambulance Service. Uh, they've done a, a thorough investigation. They come back with the challenge of getting patients discharged from the ambulances into A&E and we just need to make that smoother. And then the other bit is the link with social care so that those who are coming out can get cared for uh, and, and, and provide, provide the spaces. So there's a great deal there. The problem in rugby is that we had a community ambulance station, which uh, was where a crew would pick up an ambulance. Mm. We don't have that anymore. That gave a, a reason for an ambulance to be more likely in rugby. Mm. And rugby doesn't have an A&E where ambulances take the patients to. So, again, both of those factors mean that it, it, there is less likely to be an ambulance in the rugby area. Mm. The ambulance service say measure us by our response times and uh, their services about getting ambulances to people in time and not about buildings, mm. but it's an issue... But those response that, times, clearly... Sure, absolutely. Not, it's an issue that my constituents yeah. are bringing to me week after week. Well, Mark Palsy, thank you so much for coming in, bringing this story to us and, of course, uh, to your constituents. So, such an awful tragedy, but, but a silver lining there in terms of the community, the campaign and potentially the positive change. A absolutely, and, and Naeem is, is fighting an absolutely tremendous campaign and getting awareness on both of these issues. Well, Mark, thank you.